morning, everyone. Good afternoon, good day, uh, whatever time that you're going to be looking at this. For those that are live, hello, everybody. Welcome in to our Sunday session, our Sunday worship session. We're so glad that you are a part of what God is about to do in our midst today. God has been so good to us. You know, it's such an awesome privilege to come together as a body, as a group to worship the Lord, because truly he is such a good God. You know, we could be going through not so good things, but God still is good. You see, he doesn't change based on our situation. He doesn't change based on our circumstances. Come on. Yes. Yeah, say hallelujah. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You can worship. You can worship God in the chat too. That's fine. That's good. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. We have faith Jordan, who is going to give us our welcome and our scripture for today. Good day, everyone. My name is Faith, Jor Faith Jordan. Welcome to Going Places with Jesus Ministry Sunday Worship Service. We are so happy you have joined today, and we believe God is going to do good, going to do something great in your life. Before we move into our service, we will read our Bible scripture for today. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believeth in, in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Remember, God loves you. Now let's worship God together. And so we have someone that is going to come on right now and share what God has been doing in her life. It's a powerful way to encourage the saints. When we share our testimonies, we're not just boasting in ourselves. We are boasting in who? We're boasting in God. And it is a way to encourage because you just never know who probably is dealing with something similar, somebody who's going through something and they, they need someone to identify with them. And they might not just say, well, I have a scripture, I read the word, but could somebody truly relate to what I'm going through? And so this morning, we wanna welcome our dear sister, Sister Tammy, all the way from Trinidad. And she's gonna share her testimony as a way of encouragement to us. God bless you, Sister Tammy. Good morning, Pastor Cindy and Pastor Roger and Saints of God. I bring greetings from Dabody Pentecostal, Trinidad. And I want to say today, Jeremiah 1 5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. You know, I want to testify today that God is a way maker. My life before Christ was aimless, I would say. Jesus brought meaning to my life and helped me to find my purpose, right? I answered his call and got baptized at 18. This was the beginning of great things to come. So part of my calling or gift, and I'll talk about today, would be teaching, after schooling in America, he brought me home and I wanted to continue with teaching as I was also already doing that in Florida. I tried many avenues only to get doors slammed in my face. Not that I wasn't qualified or experienced, but it seemed as though I didn't have the right connections. However, I remembered a time in Miami where God put someone in place to help me as I was a substitute teacher, even when my work permit was about to expire. I could continue teaching, right? I was in the system as a normal employee. This person did that for me at Miami-Dade School Board, downtown Miami. I also met a man of God here as well who encouraged my faith in Trinidad. He asked me a question that went like this. If you get to a wall, what do you do? He answered, knock it down. But I thought in my head he was crazy because I was doing everything and it wasn't working out. He also confirmed to me the Lord wanted me to be a teacher. I ended up doing other things, but eventually I decided to go back to university. I got to the point in my program, there was a teaching component where I was to start teaching and I was overlooked again 
I remembered feeling discouraged. However, I decided to get involved in ministry and of all ministries, prison ministry. My first day there, um, just an event, I met the CEO of a nonprofit organization who asked me if I like to come often to the prison as a facilitator. I was thinking in my head, God has such a real sense of humor to know this is the door he opened and of course there was not any pay attached to it. Well, eventually an opportunity came, yes, four years after, and they had a, a vacancy for an adjunct lecturer at my university and my boss informed the dean she believed I could do it, who was reluctant, but she convinced her, remember, um, Tammy's facilitate at the prison. And the rest is history, I wanna say today. So, you know, in a nutshell, I really thank God for his faithfulness and he alone gets the glory, right? I want to encourage you to, to trust him and to remember that the stone that the builder reject became the cornerstone. So no matter how many times we get knocked down, you know, things happen to us. Once we stay faithful to God, you know, he will reward us. You know, when that time come, um, your season, you will be able to enjoy that season of your life. So be encouraged saints, love you, God bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody put your hands together for Sister Tammy. Come on, we can say hallelujah. Come our senior pastor, Pastor Roger Jordan, as he lead us into a time of studying the word. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you, saints of God. God is so worthy to be praised. There is no one like our God. I don't care what you're going through. God is able. Come on, I need you to say, God is able. Hallelujah. There's some of us, I believe with all my heart, that we need to find rest. We're trying to find a rest in different places. We're trying to find a rest in different scenarios and, and, and in different situations. We're trying to find a rest in people. <laughs> we can only find a rest in the almighty God. Word of God is very clear in the book of Matthew chapter 11, where Jesus, he's speaking and he says, all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son. Catch that. No man. We're talking now. We're talking intimacy now. Intimacy. No man knoweth the son but the father, neither knoweth any man the father, save the son. And he to whomsoever the son will reveal to him, that's us. Come unto me, all he that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. There are some of us, we are burdened down and God wants to give us rest. Hallelujah. He wants us to what? Lay back and rest in his arms and know that everything will be all right. It says, come unto me, all he that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 29th verse says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden it is light somebody say somebody just type in rest rest for our souls one thing i've come to realize is that in prayer we're in a season of prayer and seeking the face of god and god wants to give us rest god have mercy some of us have been faking it faking it until we make it You're professional actors, like everything is perfect, like everything is good, but behind closed doors, we're miserable. Lord have mercy. We know how to put the mask on on Zoom. We know how to put, that's why some of y'all may, may not be showing your face right now. <laughs> we know how to put the mask on. 
when we go to church, when we go to the job, at school, everywhere, but there's no peace, there's no joy of the Lord. If I have no joy in private, I'm not going to have joy in public. If I have no peace in private, I'm not going to have peace in public. Oh, my God. What I do privately reveals my true relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter what I do publicly, y'all. And guess what? If I have peace privately, it's going to show publicly. If I'm resting in God privately, it's going to show that I'm resting in God publicly. For what you see in private, you need to see in public. Why? Because my relationship with God is not fluctuating up and down. Yes, of course, we get attacks. And of course, our emotions, of course, we can get out of whack and we can get upset and we can get annoyed about situations and circumstances. Of course, we're human. But how long will we hold on to it until we give it to the Lord? There are some burdens that are too heavy to hold on to. There are some situations that we cannot fix. Oh my, you want to see God move in your life. Remain in unbroken relationship with God. Unbroken. Why? Because our relationship is the most important relationship we will ever have. We will find rest for our souls. Those places, those things that we are concerned about, God, that is frustrating us mentally. <laughs> oh, my God. I pray, God, that someone will give it to you today and rest in your presence, knowing that everything is in your control.